what mankind has achieved so far can hardly be overestimated. It's possible that man will be able to send the first interstellar probes to the Alpha Centauri star system, launch a mission to Mars and fully explore our nearest satellites as soon as in the next decade or two. And that in spite of the fact that even a century has not yet passed since the first human ventured into the space. So what will humanity be able to achieve in hundreds, thousands or even millions of years to come? Life established itself on the planet Earth by pure chance. However, the space is so great that the same chance event could occur in millions of other cases. If this is so, why is the universe silent? Cosmo. The first in space. We live on a planet that is considered young in comparison to other planetary objects. Humanity is just 2.8 million years old, while the Earth is 4.5 billion years old. Long before our planet appeared, thousands of such habitable worlds were already in existence, and these objects are still somewhere in the nearest galaxies. Imagine if mankind had appeared a billion years earlier. What technologies would we have had at our disposal today? Based on calculations by a number of today's astrophysicists, it is an undeniable fact that there exist a great number of similar planets in the space. The presence of an advanced extraterrestrial life on such planets is simply a natural consequence. Why is it then that we still haven't received a single sign that would indicate the presence of anyone else around us in the space? What could be the reasons for this absolute silence of the universe? To try to answer this question, I will tell you about one of the most atypical and fascinating puzzles of modern cosmology, the Fermi Paradox. Enrico Fermi is a scientist of Italian descent who emigrated to the United States shortly before the outbreak of World War II. Fermi worked on the design of the first nuclear reactor, but he became well known for a phrase he happened to drop in the cafeteria of the Los Alamos laboratory. During an informal conversation in 1950, Fermi, together with three other colleagues, were discussing a cartoon published in the New Yorker magazine. There was a picture of aliens unloading trash cans from flying saucers landed on their planet. The cartoon was associated with real disappearance of trash cans in New York, and aliens got into the picture because of the growing interest in extraterrestrial civilizations in those years. When discussing this cartoon, the scientists grew to be more serious, and then Fermi uttered a phrase that was to lie in the basis of an entire paradox. Have you ever wondered where they are? According to the scientists' idea, if extraterrestrial civilizations could really exist, we would have had at least three types of evidence. The presence of alien probes, ships or radio emissions. However, Despite all the ongoing research, none of these has been discovered so far. But Fermi was by far not the only scientist who thought about this. This question was raised much earlier by the Russian philosopher and inventor Konstantin Tsiolkovsky. And in 1975, astrophysicist Michael Hart described in detail the reasons of this paradox. Fermi's question was a sensible one to ask. Just imagine. Any one of us can look at the night sky right now and see thousands of small stars. According to scientists, there are about 100 billion of them in the Milky Way alone, 20% of which have their own planetary system. Furthermore, in each of these systems there should be at least one planet similar to the Earth, and 10% of these planets that can potentially support life may well have an intelligent civilization. How is it possible that with such a high probability of the existence of extraterrestrial life, to solve this riddle, the American astronomer Frank Drake developed a simple mathematical formula in 1961. It calculated the probability of existence of intelligent races in the universe. Here is this formula. N. This is the number of civilizations which use communication methods that we could detect. 
I is the average annual rate of emergence of stellar systems in our galaxy. F sub P is stars that have planets. N sub E is the number of planets or satellites that can potentially support life. F sub L is the number of inhabited planets that develop life. F sub I is the probability of the emergence of intelligent life on inhabited planets. F sub C is the fraction of civilizations with detectable forms of communication. L is the time length of a detectable signal. Many astrophysicists have tried to calculate each of the presented values, but to this day, the Drake equation has no final solution. Given the absence of any signals from nearby stellar systems, it can be assumed that any civilization that grows to be technologically advanced runs a great risk of inevitable self-destruction. For example, due to a nuclear war or ecological collapse. Thus, any developed race has very little time to be noticed. However, if this does not happen, any civilization will sooner or later reach a level of advancement that is thousands of times higher than ours. In 1964, Soviet astrophysicist Nikolai Kardashev developed and published the method of technological advancement of civilization called the Kardashev scale. Using this method, the scientists suggested an idea about the capabilities of such developed races. These capabilities would depend on the amount of useful energy they could make use of. According to Kardashev, the first type includes civilizations that are able to use all the energy available on their planet. More developed races can use all the energy emitted by the main star. And the third type of race is able to use the energy of the... According to astronomer Carl Sagan, so far our level is 70% that of civilizations of the first type, and we will be able to reach their level completely in one or two centuries but even earlier organisms that appeared in the universe comparatively recently could well have reached the level of advancement of the third type of civilization. With this kind of technologies, any races will be able to move through the space at a speed close to the speed of light or even faster. If this really happened, we would hardly miss signs of their presence. However, the universe has never given us a single sign of this. It is likely that the reason for this is that we use only radio observation methods to search for other civilizations in the galaxy. In the entire history of the research on extraterrestrial civilizations, not a single star has been discovered that would demonstrate unusually intense radio waves. This leads us to the conclusion that we are the only civilization in our part of the galaxy that uses radio waves for communication. Perhaps if other civilizations do exist, we don't notice them because they use completely different types of communication. The universe is full of things we are unaware of, and if someone does live thousands of light years away from us, they might be able to use channels of communication unknown to us, for example neutrinos. Unfortunately, this version of the solution of the Fermi paradox is not the only one. Many scientists believe that our solitariness in the space is an inevitable fact. Maybe we simply don't know why other civilizations have died out. Others suggest that we simply have not yet reached the level of development sufficient for communicating with the universe, so it keeps silent. Others, proponents of the so-called zoo theory, believe that our level of development is too low compared to extraterrestrial races. Our radio signals disappear into the distant depths of the outer space without a trace. And who knows, maybe those who see them simply don't understand what they mean. Or maybe intelligent aliens are aware of our attempts, but will respond only in the fullness of time.